So in my earlier videos, I wasn't getting the sound that I was hearing. And I realized when I'm playing, my hands are about the same distance apart as my ears. So I'm hearing in stereo, but the single mic wasn't capturing it. So I played around with different kinds of microphones and different setups. I tried some coming in in the corners, tried a microphone overhead. Um, I tried a, uh, several different things. And then there was this eureka moment when I had the large mic on a boom and I was able to swing it out and back. That was very convenient. The sound wasn't stereo, but that's okay. But it made me realize this boom is very handy. And so this is what it's evolved into. A couple pencil mics in a standard XY configuration on a low profile mic stand with a long boom and very important, a big weight. You have to have the big weight to hold the whole thing down. The XY mics gives the stereo effect that I was hearing and the swinging boom makes it really easy to use. You can push it out of the way, walk in, sit down, swing it into place. And if you don't want to record, you can just leave it off to the side. They're just there out of the way. When you're playing, they're close, but not too close. The setup's really convenient and easy to use. The low profile mic stands are sometimes called drum or amp mic stands, and they come in different sizes. I like the long boom. I tried the shorter ones and they didn't swing as easy, but to their advantage, they do have a smaller footprint. I don't like the desk mic stands. The base is not stable and they fall over, but they might be a good option if space is limited. A big weight attached to the center of the tripod is critical. Without the weight, it's gonna fall over. You can use anything that's heavy, but you gotta firmly attach it right to the base of the mic stand. This is a downrigger weight which you may not be familiar with. A downrigger weight is used in fishing to get the fishing lines deep fast. Think of it as a sinker. You could also use a scuba dive weight and they're cheaper than a downrigger weight. You can find them for sale on the internet and if you're lucky maybe you'll get free shipping. Dive weights and downrigger weights are made from lead so this is very important. If you buy a lead weight get one that is coated in vinyl or some other plastic. Lead is toxic and you don't want it on the floor at kid level. You don't want to expose yourself to it or your friends. You could use a normal height mic stand, not the low profile one, but visually they're kind of in the way. To their advantage, because they're higher, you're less likely to trip over it than you are the low profile one. Well, that's enough about the boom. Let's talk about how the mics are placed on the boom. A match pair of pencil mics should come with a bar. If they don't, then you have to buy one or fabricate one. The bars I have use a fitting that screws into a standard mic stand. My experience though with mics and getting them positioned on that bar is that you'll end up just kind of fiddling with it to get the angles just right. So you can spend a lot of time on that. And so I've got some hardware things that I'm gonna recommend here um, that have made my life easier. I really like this flexible ball joint. It has a quarter inch fitting that's common on cameras, not mics. So in my audio visual world, um, there's kind of three common fittings. There's the quarter inch, the half inch, and the 5 8 inch. Mic stands are 5 8 inch, cameras are quarter inch. Some tripods and mics are half inch. So you may need adapters if you go this route. I bought the quarter inch to 5 8 inch adapter, but you can also get a quarter inch to half inch and then pair that with a half inch to 5 8 inch. You can also buy ball joints uh, with fittings that are 5 8 inch on both sides. And then you may not need to buy any adapters. But I like the flexibility of having one side be a quarter inch fitting because then you can use it for other things. You may not need a ball joint at all, uh, depending on your microphones, the bar, and how you want to position everything. But I like the ball joint setup for its flexibility. I can change the angle easily and test different positions and check for different sounds. I did have to use some washers and a piece of broken mic holder to extend the connection from my mics to the bar. One mic is a little higher than the other, and I had to do this to get the 90 degree angle just right for the mics. You may not need to do it at all. I'd recommend mics with a shock system. Without the shock system, you're more likely to get bumps and knocks showing up in your mix. The mics need to be close to the tapa. I find about 10 centimeters is pretty good. 
If you're too far back, you lose the stereo effect. And if you're too close, you're going to hit them while you're playing. I like to position the mic so they're about level with the top of the cajon. But I point them at an angle, downward, to a point about five, four centimeters below the tapa, somewhere in there. Once the mics are in position, you'll connect the wires to the mics and then to your audio interface. In my DAW, I like to label the two tracks based on the cajon player's hands. The right hand track and the left hand track. It's easy to trace the sound to your DAW. Just rub your fingernail gently on the plastic connector where your mic wire goes into the mic. In your DAW, you'll see a bit more activity on the channel that you're testing. When you set your mic levels, be especially careful of clipping. The worst offender from a cajon will often be the hits from the edges. They tend to be high and loud, and they distort to a nasty sound that's not really fixable. This will be dependent on the cajon, the player, and the song. How you treat the stereo channels in your mix will depend on, on how the mix is going to be used. From the audience perspective, you would swing the right hand channel to the left, and the left hand to the right. But from the cajon player's perspective, you'd swing the right hand balance to the right and the left hand balance to the left. So that's it for the stereo mics. But what about the other mic that you see on the floor here? I use the KSM44, just kind of give a bit of room ambiance. And sometimes it's picking up a bit more bass than the, uh, the mic techs do. Depends on the cajon. Well, I hope this was informative and inspires. And uh, hope you have a good time playing Cajon. That's all from Alaska. <laughs>